And a whole bunch of people, not really me, had some discussions about starting an online statewide newspaper. Sure. Kind of, you wouldn't call it a paper because there's no paper. Right, but, right, right. And then people kept talking and kept talking and not doing anything. So I just decided on the basis of no nothing that anyone who's ever uh, written a business plan would call a business plan, which is why I'm not making any money. <clears throat> I just to start, to started to do it. So I had a uh, people up in, in, in Glover, uh, NEK Info, a very good uh, uh, firm, do me a, you know, design a, a website. And I just started. And um, relying on donations for my meager income. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm sort of, I'm almost breaking even. Well, let's say, let's put it this way. If you're not really a good accountant, I'm breaking <laughs> even. If I were actually to hire an accountant. Don't count the to gas go, money. Right? That guy, exactly. <laughs> don't count the gas money, the lunch money, when you come to my peer, things like that. Sure. Not to mention my time. Right, right. Uh, if you counted all that, I'm not breaking even. Um, but I'm having a good time. Well, the, and the other thing that's happened is a couple of other people have started to do similar things. Mm -hmm. and I guess you've had Ann Galloway yeah, in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, somebody else has started something in the Burlington area. And now Ann Galloway, a VT digger, she and I may do some things. We may do a little uh, work together. We haven't worked out the details right, yet. Right. We had a, but that's a breaking story. For that's our, a breaking for story. We had a, we had a lunch meeting, and we're, we're talking. And, and so I may do a couple of stories for her, for her, for VT Digger. Great. Separate from my own stuff. Right. It's looking like a very, very busy few months coming up. It's going to be a very busy few months, right? Um, and you plan on coming to uh, check in with the legislature regularly throughout the summer? I hope a couple, at least once a week, and I hope twice. Great. Do you have any uh, targeted things you're watching? Probably budget, maybe. Thing well, on or? to some, what I try to do is what everybody else isn't doing. Uh, and, you know, the budget, just the basic budget talks between the governor on one hand and Chap Smith and Peter Shumlin on the mm -hmm. other and the committee chairman, the, the, the free press and the, and the people, the state, the service that do, does the uh, Montpelier and Rutland, they do a good job with that. So I'm not going to, there's no point in duplicating what they've done. Right. Um, uh, but, you know, I might go into some of the specifics, the, some of the cuts, what they will mean, uh, how, uh, how, how much they might change life, what they would, uh, uh, how they would impact people. So I might do some specific budget stories. Uh, Vermont Yankee, of course, is going to be a story throughout the session. They have not had a good week. Um, they're sort of like Barack Obama. And, <laughs> and they didn't have a good week. Um, he uh, is, I think. He's pro-nuke. Actually, it's a fine uh, yeah, well, he's certainly not opposed to it. That's right. Well, I don't think um, if, if it were only people who were opposed to nuclear power in general who had problems with Vermont Yankee, Vermont Yankee wouldn't have nearly as many problems as it has. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. It goes beyond that. Now, that's a story you wrote recently on and said you were making a point of kind of not writing on it because other people were, but you felt compelled with all the recent... Um, well, f first because other people were, second because there are so many technical and financial complexities, and unless you have time to really immerse yourself in them, then mm -hmm. I think it's irresponsible to just spout off. Right. And I hadn't done, I still haven't done the scientific, I have done some of the reporting about the financial, the e economics of Vermont Yankee. But then the politics of it became so, uh, you know, rose in salience, and, or what does one say, saliency? No, I think saliency. Saliency um, is a great noun. Uh, and that's, um, uh, because of their blunders, and maybe at the, toward the end, really more than blunders, and that I am uh, uh, capable of, of uh, assessing. And what I said was that um, whatever the benefits and, and cost of, of uh, continuing the operation, the company gives the impression of not knowing what it's doing or of being very, uh, of being straight shooters at all. Sure, sure. And that's a problem mm -hmm. for them. If you're trying to get if you're trying to get the, the legislature to approve you, you have to get the public to approve you, you don't want to make all these blunders and look like right. fools and dishonorable fools. Right. So I, I guess whether that's perception or reality will you know, leave for others to tease out. But you actually have, and they are doing a marketing campaign to change perceptions. And they're leading with the jobs issue. And that's something that's not as 
technically complicated. You can actually count jobs and put them in perspective. And you did just that. I did that. 600, 600 and some jobs, <laughs> actually about half of them uh, are, are people from Massachusetts because the, the plant is right on the line there. Mm -hmm. um, but even if they were all 600, that's less than one half of 1% of the jobs in Vermont. Now they're good jobs. Right. But the idea that the typical Vermonter wants to keep Vermont Yankee because it provides one half of 1% of the state's jobs is not worth discussing. Mm -hmm. uh, people, it wasn't built to be a jobs right, powerhouse. That's right. It's here to provide safe, reliable, and relatively inexpensive electricity. What people in Vermont want to know is when I turn on the switch, is the light going to come on? And am I going to not have to worry that it's going to come on? And is right. it going to not... Is the electric bill not going to bo yeah. bother me when I get it every month? Um, that's what, you know, what they could have said. I mean, it would be dishonest, but they could have done a campaign was, do you want the light to come on when you flick the switch now? There <laughs> Actually are, address right, that, yeah. There are alternative sources of right. power, so that wouldn't have been honest. But pot potentially the alternative sources of power will be more expensive. And almost certainly, or at least it's very likely, they'll, they will require... Vermonters to, in effect, we won't do it ourselves, burn more coal mm -hmm. and other fossil fuels, but including coal, which about half the electricity in this country is uh, uh, generated by coal. So we wouldn't burn it, but it would have to be burned on our behalf, maybe, quite possibly, at least for a while, until you get all this solar and wind, if the potential for solar and wind is there, as some people say, and if the downside of solar and wind doesn't make people say, wait a minute, maybe we don't want all this solar and wind because there are environmental and other problems with solar and wind. Right. Not that I'm not against them. I'm not against anything uh, except people trying to fool us. <laughs> sorting, sorting stuff out is what right. you're for, right? Um, now, uh, so th the 2012... Uh, relicensing date, the 40-year date comes up, and um, we don't know if we will have a uh, Democrat or a Republican in uh, the governor's seat. Uh, I'm wondering how you're seeing that, well, I th that issue, Well, in 2012, perhaps. we don't, I mean, if, if, but the, the, the uh, Yankees said they want the vote this year, and we know who's there this year. It, mm -hmm. I don't know, but it would be hard for them to get that vote. It's looking increasingly uh, like a bad year for an, them an, to pick. Uh, uh, an affirmative vote this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we don't. We, although I think there is a broad assumption that there won't, isn't likely to be that much change in the legislature. I don't see how the Democrats can actually pick up seats. They're okay. kind They're of maxed out. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't, I haven't heard anybody suggest, even the most uh, optimistic Republican, that, you know, they're going to take back either house uh -huh. or the majority. Anything can happen. Right. But Right. You don't see the likelihood of that right now, sure. uh, this coming year. Um, governor as a whole, is, is a, they have a much better chance of, of keeping that, I think. Okay, okay. Um, do you see, uh, you mentioned the word optimism. Do you see optimism in uh, the legislature for uh, tackling our budget woes? Uh, that's a good question. The, the leaders were very, I think, very smart. Uh, Tuesday, they said, "Oh, we're not going to say anything's dead on arrival. We're going to talk to the governor. Everything will be considered because it because people don't want partisan squabbling. Uh, they want people to try to work it. And the governor was has also been somewhat less uh, confrontational mm -hmm. than he was last year. And uh, and everybody agrees that it's a very difficult budget. So, you know, I think there is some chance that they will. They'll, they're going to differ and fight over some things." But it might not get as bad as it did last year, and I doubt that we're going to get to the veto and veto override situation. That again. was I don't know, very unique, right? I don't know that we won't on the budget. Well, it was strange last year because there were two veto overrides, mm -hmm. and, and you know, two out of the seven in Vermont's history or something <laughs> like that. And Douglas had never, I can't remember when the last time, I mean, I did, it wasn't that long ago, but it was not recent. And then two in one year was really extraordinary. And the fact that it was the first budget override, I think, ever. I suspect we will not get to that. I suspect they will work something out, even if it means punting a few things for next year. You know, accounting is a creative art. Mm -hmm. You can play with things. You can find money. Right. You could say, well, we'll pay for that next fiscal year somehow. I, I, 
Sure. Uh, people, people can do some of that. And you've written actually on the state of uh, the rainy day fund and sort of the logic of when you tap it or how you tap it. And um, do you want to share a little about Well, it? some people, uh, uh, D Senator Doug Racine, who's one of the candidates for governor, has uh, openly come out and said he's for the so-called balanced approach. Cut the budget, cut spending, some tax increases, temporary, and use the rainy day fund in order to limit uh, especially the budget cuts for services to very poor people, very sick people, mentally ill, et cetera. Um, and others, including a lot of Democrats, don't want to do that, including some fairly liberal Democrats, say, no, that's not what the rainy day fund is for. The rainy day fund is, is for when every, any particular year's revenues don't come in as fast as you thought they were going to come in. 